Hello. Let's talk about mystery books. I've been waiting forever to bust this out. Just needed to, because we're talking about my favorite mystery books. So this is my top 10 mystery books so far, you know, since the title of this series. I have previously done my top 10 horror books for now, which is already inaccurate. It was inaccurate about two weeks after I filmed it. <laughs> and then I've also done my top 10 thrillers, which I don't think that one's changed. So I'll link those down below. But let's talk about mystery. Now, first of all, now I love mysteries. I've loved them ever since I was a kid. And my mom had all the Nancy Drew books in their original versions because they were her favorites when she was a kid. And she used to read them to me when I was sick. And I just, I loved them. I loved them so much. I, I haven't reread, I read any of them since I was an adult. I don't think they would hold up, but oh, they were so good. The combination of like the atmosphere and like solving the mystery and going to these weird places, like, you know, the places. I was thinking, what makes something a favorite mystery? I really could have gone like a bunch of different ways with this, but I wanted to like stick true to like what is a mystery book. And the reason I wanted to do that is because there, there's some mystery books that I don't read for the mystery. If you read a cozy mystery, you're not reading for the mystery. You're reading for the coziness. <laughs> If you read a book for the characters, you know, there's so many mystery books that I read for the characters. I could care less how the mystery turns out, i.e. Veer Wong and my favorite book of last year, Liar, Dreamer, Thief, which is a mystery among many other things. But the reason I liked it wasn't because of the mystery. It was for other reasons. And then you're also not going to see any Richard Osman on this list. You're not going to see any Thursday Murder Club because the reason I read these, again, not for the mystery. I read it for the characters and the atmosphere. And even though I opened up my video with my Sherlock Holmes hat, you're not gonna see any Sherlock Holmes. Mainly because this is top 10 mystery novels, not top 10 mystery stories. And frankly, even The Hound of the Baskervilles is not my favorite. None of the four Sherlock Holmes novels are my favorite. I prefer the short stories. He's not making the list either. <laughs> Anything else is fair game. What I'm looking for in this list, or what I decided what I wanted to focus on was the actual, I read this book and loved it for the mystery itself. Now, if other things are good, like characters, setting, atmosphere, coziness, levels of other stuff, you know, bonus. But the mystery itself has to be something that I loved. With that said, I did want to start out the video <laughs> My top 10, which by the way, could change at any moment. The only one that's number for sure is number one. The rest of these are, you know, whatever. And by the way, all of these, highly recommend if you want some mysteries. I wanted to start off the list technically with an honorable mention because it's it's not a whodunit. It's not a why done it. It's not a done it. Uh, it's actually a nonfiction medical mystery book. And I didn't think that it actually belonged on the list, but I thought it was such a clever take on a mystery and it was in my mystery tag on Goodreads that I had to share it. And that is Brain on Fire by Susanna Cahalan. There is a movie that Netflix made about this. I do not recommend the movie, it's fine. But the book is so much better, as is nearly always the case. But this is, like I said, a nonfiction book. Um, it's a memoir, sort of. But it's about Susanna, who was a young reporter with the New York Post. Was it the Post? Or was it the New Yorker? I don't know. Whatever. Some New York newspaper. And she started to act very unlike herself. And she went, she went genuinely clinically mad and was institutionalized. And she almost died. She certainly would have spent the rest of her life, you know, institutionalized and not able to function in the outer world. But I believe, and it's been a long time since I've read the book, she actually had an encounter with somebody who solves medical mysteries and they happened to suggest and they finally diagnosed her. And what she ended up having was something really rare. And she's since become something of a spokesperson for this, this condition. How the book is written is she, because the condition made her lose basically a month of her life, she doesn't remember. What she did was she recreates this book and her own story like she was investigating it as a reporter from the outside because that's essentially what she's doing because all she has is other people's statements, videos, transcripts, that kind of thing. She has no memory of that time. 
So she kind of goes at her own medical mystery from the point of view of an outsider, even though she's the ultimate insider. So it's, it was just really interesting. I love a medical mystery. I love any kind of mystery, but this was, this was really good. So honorable mention, and I'm already at six minutes, so this is dumb. So let's get through the rest of these. <laughs> like I said, these first, the first nine are sort of interchangeable. I had them ordered differently earlier today and differently the day before. <laughs> and I sat down right now and just moved them around. So honestly, the, the first nine spots don't matter. Number one is number one though. So let's first talk about my number 10, which is The Lost Man by Jane Harper. Now this is a book that is very heavy on the atmosphere, but what is clever about this book, and this is my favorite Jane Harper book by far, it's a standalone. It's not part of her series that starts with The Dry, and it takes place in the Australian Outback. Something that I've I remember very vividly from this book is that it takes place in a region of the country that is very desolate and it, sometimes it's two, three hours in between houses. Not just like in between towns, but in between houses. So in effect, when this brother, uh, these three brothers get together and one of them is dead and two of them are still alive, it's, it's essentially a, a locked room mystery in a extremely wide space because so few people live there and so few people would have been able to get to this place to murder the brother that the, there's a very limited pool of suspects, even though it's enormous. And like the focus on like survival and how they have to live the way that they live was really good. And it's what ultimately bumped this up to five stars for me. But the mystery is also really good because it involves lots of family drama and it was just really interesting. So I, it's, it's always stuck with me. But yeah, The Lost Man by Jane Harper is my number 10. Number nine, this is an author that's kind of divisive, but I happen to really like her. And that's The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett. I was very surprised when I went to put a Janice Hallett on this list and I realized that even though I had rated this four and a half stars and I'd rated the Alperton Angels five stars, this is the one I wanted to put on the list. This is the one I think of more fondly because it has a very it has a very emotional reason behind the actions of the mystery. Now, Janice Hallett is infamous at this point for writing mysteries that are mixed media. Her first book, The Appeal, is her weakest book. So I actually wouldn't suggest starting there. I would suggest starting with The Twyford Code or The Alperton Angels or even her newest one, which I forget the name of. I haven't read it yet. So this is a strange one. So the main character is Steve. He has always known about this supposed code in the hidden hidden in the books of Edith Twyford who's a play on this other British author whose name I can't remember at the moment I'll put it here and supposedly there's a code in her books and but he has like a grudge because he found a copy of one of her books on a bus one day brought it to school and his favorite teacher he was a a member of a, of a class with higher needs and he really loved his teacher and one day she disappeared and he's always blamed it on this Twyford code. So as an adult, he comes back and he decides he's gonna solve the mystery. Now this book is actually told in transcripts of cell phone recordings as Steve is trying to find out what happened to his teacher and unlock the secret of the code that is supposedly hidden in these children's books. What was missing for me and the appeal was the emotion. All of those characters are annoying <laughs> as hell. And like, it's just about the drama, literally and, and metaphorically, because it's about a uh, team of thespians, <laughs> community theater. <laughs> but also they're just very dramatic within their group. And it, there isn't anyone really to root for and there isn't an emotional core. Here, this has that. There's a father-son relationship at the core of this, as well as Steve being the kind of guy who, you know, the, the, the emotional connection he had with his teacher is strong and it runs throughout the book. So yeah, I really enjoyed this one. It's got heart and it's got puzzles for your mind to figure out. So yeah, number nine is The Twyford Code. Sorry if I'm doing a bad job of describing these books. It's really hard to talk about mysteries, <laughs> at least for me. Okay, now number eight, I knew I wanted to have one of this author's books on the list, but most of them I do not read for the mystery. I definitely come to them for other reasons, which is mostly the character work, the investigation techniques, but I guess they are part of the mystery, but this is the one I decided on. So we're gonna go with it. And that's 
Broken Harbor by Tana French. Probably my personal favorite is the first book, In the Woods. Uh, but again, I that's not my favorite because of the mystery. It's my favorite for other reasons. This one I think has the strongest mystery plot out of all of them. I almost went with The Trespasser, but this one came out on top because it just, it's, st it's stuck. This book takes place post-2008 recession in Ireland. There were these abandoned communities of half-built McMansions and this family, the Spains, they bought and bought into the community right before this all happened. And now they're living in this abandoned neighborhood and they can't afford to fix their house. There's holes in the wall and, you know, things aren't great. And then one day, all the Spain family turns up dead. The dad, the two kids, and then the mom is actually, she's in critical condition at the hospital. So these detectives are called in to try to figure out what happened and what they find is so creepy. And there's lots of discussions about civilization and what it does to our brains and what makes somebody lose their sense of reality and like lots of economic criticisms as well. I don't know. It's just very good. And it's very, at least for me, but I'm not written that great at solving mysteries but it's it's it was a very satisfying surprising ending so yeah broken harbor ton of french was number eight you're gonna sense a pattern in most of these books i love a meta mystery this maybe isn't the best place for new mystery readers to start although with a couple of exceptions but a lot of these are only really really enjoyable if you have read a lot of mysteries previously and you want to see somebody play around with the format. And this is one of those, and that's Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. This is a mystery book within a mystery book. The frame story is that the editor, Susan Ryland, is reading the last manuscript of her author, who is a famous detective novelist. He wrote a detective called Atticus Pund. Pund? Pund, not sure how to say it. And it's in the model of, it's in the vein of Dorothy Sayers and Agatha Christie. He's very popular. And so she's reading his last manuscript. So you get that whole, the whole manuscript that he writes, which he's deliberately written it a certain way. So it's not just a book. It's a book that's like got secrets built into it, but it's also a mystery itself. And then in the surrounding story, the author is murdered. So Susan has to try to figure out why her author was murdered and what does the book inside the book have to do with that and it was just very pleasing the the nods to agatha christie and dorothy sayers were very pleasing and not only that but the mystery within the mystery and the mystery outside and the way they connected was extremely satisfying and i just had a great old, grand old time and there is a sequel called moonflower murders and the he just announced a third book in this series is coming out called Marble Hall Murders next year. So I'm very excited for that, but nothing's as good as the first one. This was seven Magpie Murders. Okay, next up, number six is my only historical mystery. And that is Stuart Turton's The Devil in the Dark Water. This is also sort of a meta mystery in that it takes place in 1634. And the main characters are a famous detective and his assistant. You know, they predate Sherlock Holmes by 200 years. They are setting forth on a voyage from um, the Dutch East India colonies back to England. And on board, things start happening that seem very devilish. It's just why it's called the devil. And there's an impossible murder that occurs. And of course, he gets involved. But this Stuart Turton is one of the authors that likes to play with the genre. Like there's a base level and then he takes it up and then he takes it up. So this isn't just a straightforward mystery, but it also is really good historical fiction at the same time as being a really good mystery. And I enjoy it very much. This book, probably the best thing he's written so far. I really like the seven and a half deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle, but that one has some like fat phobia issues and some other things that are a little bit flawed with it. This one is like perfect for me and I really enjoyed it. Can't say much more. <laughs> the Devil in the Dark Water. If you want boat mystery, mystery on a boat, this is the book for you. And then number five is another meta mystery. This is actually, all we've had so far are whodunits, which is basically like your standard mystery, you know, who did it and why. Now what we're gonna have is sometimes called a why done it or a how done it which is when the author tells you pretty much straight away who the murderer is 
but there's further secrets beyond that. And this author is famous for writing how done it's, and that is Keigo Higashino, who is quickly becoming one of my favorite mystery authors. This is uh, The Devotion of Suspect X. It is about a woman who's, is it her ex-husband? Yeah, her abusive ex-husband finds her and one day at her door and her neighbor who is, who is basically in love with her, here's the fight, here's the commotion. And he comes over and he's, he sees that she's killed her ex-husband. So he tries, he immediately sits there and he comes up with a plan to help her hide the body and, and evade justice from the police. What this turns out to be is sort of a battle of wits between this guy who is Suspect X and this detective. He's not really a detective, uh, but he, his nickname is Detective Galileo because he's extremely smart. And he's called in by the detective who knows him. He's a doctor, he's got a PhD and he's a math genius. So what it ends up being is like this cat and mouse game between one genius and another the one who is hiding the crime and the one who's trying to figure figure out what happened. And then there's other secrets along the way that we didn't see coming. So it's just like an exercise in suspense when you already know what happened and it still manages to reveal things along the way. It's so brilliant. I loved it so much. Yeah, check this one out. Number four is a book that everybody read and loved last year, including myself and why not? It's great. And that is Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone by Benjamin Stevenson. This is another meta mystery. This is a book where the author of the book is supposedly writing a memoir, but he's doing it in the style of a murder mystery. And he tells you up front, that's what he's doing. He also tells you up front all the page numbers where somebody dies. So I literally went through and I marked the pages where people died and it added an extra layer of fun to the book because sometimes you would come to a part in the book where a little gray tab was and I was like somebody dies on this page but nobody dies so what that means is that somebody died in the story but we don't know about it yet and it was fun to see that happen but overall this is a book about Ernie Cunningham and he and his family have a history with murder and the title is literal so we get to hear about him and his family and every person in his family who they've killed one by one. And as it's revealed, we also get revealed the current murder mystery plot because they're all at a family reunion at a snowy ski resort and somebody is murdered and they get caught up in that. So he gets to tell the story about his family and killing people and they're not like assassins or anything. So this is just totally like this family just accidentally kills people. And some of them are really sad and some of them are kind of goofy. <laughs> but there's like a actual mystery plot going on while all this other stuff is happening. It's just layers and layers of fun is what this is. This is a fun book. So if you like mysteries and you wanna have fun, check this one out. Number three is my basic bitch pick because we had to have an Agatha Christie on here and I thought long and hard about which one to do. I haven't read them all yet. I've read like a third of them. She wrote so many books in her lifetime. And I'm, I'm just going with the one that everybody loves because Honestly, I think it's the best and that is And Then There Were None. This is a book that has been rewritten and copied and adapted so many times and that is because it is just a, kind of a perfect novel, especially the edited version that isn't racist anymore. <laughs> so don't read the original version, which had two offensive names, not just one. Hey, stop that. Don't chew my hat. Lily's chewing my hat. The current version is wonderful. So the plot is that I think it's like 10, 10 people are called to this island near England and there is a huge storm while they are there and they all get stranded on this island and nobody knows who's invited them to be there or why and then all of a sudden it becomes clear that somebody has invited them there for nefarious purposes and people can start getting picked off one by one. And trying to figure out who did it is one of the greatest mysteries written of all time. Okay, I'm gonna take my hat off now. <laughs> and it's just so much fun. I highly recommend the audiobook. It is an extremely fun listening experience. That's how I've done it both times I've read it, but I need to get a hard copy as well. Now I will say that I almost picked the ABC Murders, which is I feel like her other plot that really stands out in terms of that one is so, and then there were none is not a detective story actually. It is, a mystery where you as the reader have to figure things out. I almost picked a Poirot, <laughs> the ABC murders. So that one, 
also check out if you are looking to get into Agatha Christie. But and then and then there went none is just it's just a stone cold classic and I had to pick it even though it's basic. So that's number three. And now number two was not marketed as a mystery and you could probably argue that it's not a mystery but I think that it is one and it is the only book on this list that is not a murder mystery and that is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. This is a very hard book to describe but it is one of my favorite books and it is about a group of people who get so a group of people in Sweden so this is translated from Swedish if you guys weren't if some if somebody somehow wasn't aware that that Frederick Bachman is Swedish he writes in Swedish and then his books are translated this was translated by Neil Smith although Frederick Bachman speaks English I saw him speak English in a speech one time anyway he's very funny this is a book about a group of people who get stuck in a real estate showing when a bank robber comes in from robbing a bank and holds them hostage and then the police get involved and the mystery here is what happened inside of this building and where the bank robber went because the bank robber went in but the bank robber did not come out and we get to know all of these people in their backstories and what's driving them and then this weird like bond develops between the hostages and it's just masterful and there is a tv show on netflix that is also very fun if you want to watch it after you read it but I'm not going to say any more than that other than this is a book about among other things mental health and being lonely and depressed and anxious anxious highly recommend anxious people by Frederick Bachman that's my number two now like I said all of those I honestly could have switched them up because depending on what I'm in the mood for at any given time they might go up and down I sat here and I just, this cannot go anywhere but number one. I've read it three times. I've seen the movie like 10 times. Obviously the mystery is great, but there's something about it that even though I know exactly what's gonna happen every time, it's still great. And that is The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Steve Larson. I will forever be so sad that he died before he could finish the series. And I refuse to read any of the books that were published after his family got a hold of the rights and sold them because they are not in any way, shape or form how he envisioned his characters, Lisbeth Salander, the titular girl and Mikhail Blomquist. I don't know if I'm saying his name right or not. Uh, this is another Swedish author. Actually, there's two Swedish authors on here. What do, wait, what, what's the nationality? I've got Swedish author, Swedish author, American, Japanese, British, American, Irish, Australian, and British. So actually I got to, I got quite a bit of diversity. You usually think about murder mysteries and whodunits being like a British genre because so many of the great detectives are British. Side note, before I before I continue with Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and then finish out this video, I just want to register a complaint with marketing and with people in their reviews. Knives Out is a fantastic movie, okay? I just want to get that. It's one of my favorite movies. Not every murder mystery or mystery is like Knives Out. The only thing Knives Out has in common with any other mystery is that it's a mystery. Stop comparing things to Knives Out when they are not having anything to do with the themes or the story structure of Knives Out. Please and thank you. It's gotta have class struggles. It's gotta have commentary about dysfunctional families. It's gotta have a guy who is leaving his fortune to a squabbling family. And it's gotta have metafictional elements. The person who died was a storyteller of some sort okay that's Knives Out you don't have like two or three of those at least the book you're comparing to is not Knives Out Knives Out didn't invent murder mysteries just stop now back to Girl with the Dragon Tattoo if you have somehow been living under a rock since like 2007 2008 whenever this was published in English actually let me look it was published in 2005 in Sweden 2008 this was published in 2008. I was right. It is about Kale Blomkiss. We meet him first. He is a Swedish journalist. He is on the left and he has just been to jail for complex reasons, but he's a little bit disgraced. And this billionaire, millionaire, I'm not sure which at this point, it's been a while since I've reread this, reaches out to him because he wants him to help him solve the mystery of what happened to his granddaughter, Harriet. Now, Harriet went missing when she was a teenager. She's never been found. Nobody has been able to figure out what happened to her, but Henrik, who's the millionaire, 
is convinced that she was murdered and that somebody on the island that he lives on, which is mostly made up of his family members, <laughs> killed his granddaughter. And he hires Mikhail to figure it out. And then Mikhail in turn hires an assistant, Elizabeth Salander, who is the titular girl. And she is very unique person. She has been a victim of the system her entire life. Nobody has protected her in the way that they should and men and power structures take advantage of her for being different. And so she is angry and a genius and they meet and they solve the case. What really appeals to me besides the characters, because obviously they boosted to number one, they're the reason this is number one, is that the mystery itself is so pleasingly full of forensic detail and there's actual like they dig into so many files, they painstakingly look through videos and pictures, they interview people all over the country, and it's just, it's just such a good investigation. I just, and then the ending, when they find out who did it, is just classic, just, just classic. And then books two and three are also good, but those are mostly not mysteries as much as they are further elucidations of Elizabeth's character and delving into who she is as a person and where she came from and why she is the way that she is. This one is purely a mystery and we are just introduced to her. We don't we don't know why she is the way that she is yet. This is my favorite mystery book, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. And with that, I am gonna put all these books back. I'm gonna drink some ice water and I'm gonna go to bed and I'm gonna wake up early in the morning and edit this video <laughs> and get it out in time for optimal algorithm uploading. If you have made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for sticking around. I very much appreciate it. If you liked the video, please don't forget to leave me a like and subscribe if you want to. And if you don't have anything to say about any of these books or what your favorite mystery novels are, you can always leave me a magnifying glass or a pipe. Even though Sherlock didn't make this list, I, I, you know, tell me your favorite mysteries in the comments. If there's ones that I haven't read, I want to know. I mean, I have like a lot of mysteries on my TBR, a lot, a lot, and that's fun. But you know, if I've missed some, I want to know about it. Please leave me your favorites below. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, love you, bye.